terve and welcome to Kepris Garage. There is a bunch of different kind of parts I may want to go on and start restoring. Should I actually start working on the frame? Jump into the deep end, they say. Okay, I say. This kind of thing. Yeah, that's the cradle for the engine. There was the brake, so it's from like this. There is this. That's the leg. Probably going to have to put it together to make sure that I have everything and everything is like working nicely. That's the front side. This goes here. Ah, I don't remember. Well, it's something like this. So, is this from there? Does the holes match? They kind of match. Yeah, they do. So that's from there. Uh, I'm pretty sure this part is all okay. There is the batch for the serial number which needs to be salvaged. This one. Yes, so this one would be pretty simple and straightforward cleaning and painting. But this one, this has something to do with the rear brake. Because it's sitting like here, there's your foot. to have the old one oh, from there. It's probably going to be a little bit easier said than done because it's completely rusted. So that's probably our first priority now. that it's like completely melted together there won't be any chance to have this out from here
that's nice. Now we have hole for the brake lever and next I'm going to grind this clean. Phew! And now this one is sandblasted. Uh, the rust came out pretty nicely. But it looks pretty okay. I might end up replacing this small bit of sheet metal. I'm not sure what it does actually, but it looks like it's it's easy to redo a better than it's done earlier, so yeah, that's probably something I will do. But overall it's pretty nice. Alright, let's try to figure out how I can get this thing out from here. Uh, last time I used the grinder, but it's too big, so I scratched, scratched the wind plate a little bit. I don't want to do it here because it's already pretty rough condition. So I figured out if I do some drilling, or then I also can use the Dremel to let's see. Drill a bit. No. Too much force. I broke it, but I can drill the rest of the tap inside there. The other one. Do we have the same kind of luck with this? Yeah, I should be able to. Small bruise on the wind plate, but what not? So that's now out of there. Nice, nicely, nicely. The wind plate is barely touched. Just a, just a small cut up there, but it's good. Phew, at last the mainframe is also grinded and cleaned. Uh, there was a bunch of difficult parts because of all those tiny cavities and things like that. Let me show you. Like that one. And basically the whole this area there. I think it's clean enough now.
Alright, so the swing arm is now sandblasted. It came out pretty nice. Uh, the rust is been sitting there like one trillion of years, so it's pretty tough. I'm now wondering whether I should give it a little bit more love with sandblaster and then I need to probably just use the filler to seal the small craters it has. But it's like pretty alright. The insides are the probably the worst ones. I think I'm going to also weld these holes now. Uh, I'm guessing here that because of the holes are on the same side of the swing arm, either one of these holes has let the water go in and of course whenever the water goes in it's coming out because of it, this being metal so it comes through the through the metal and that's the reason it's it's holy hole. So I'm going to uh, see whether this is like completely gone. I'm sure it has some better metal here so it's only on the lower part. Uh, the hollow cavity ends up here so it's the bottom part of the place where the water has been sitting so I will cut a small piece out from there and make a patch. I will also fill in this small dent here and of course fill the bigger hole up here so we are not having the same problem in a couple of years again. <sighs> Yeah, so it's only the only the end of the the, the, the box or cavity which is completely rusted. There's a, so probably somewhere there starts the good stuff. So somewhere here I will need to create small pads there. <coughs> and also this plate needs to be redone. It's super thin. I will also try to fill in some of these smaller holes here. But let's see it might be a difficult task for me with my thick welding skills. But let's remove the plate and create new one for that. I marked the spot here so we know where it sits. I am not going to create those cuts on the corners. I will just do small border radius there. <laughs> so I have this. Let me show you. Let me show you. I scanned my uh, spare part list so I can have small reference for the parts I'm working on. Here is the uh, cradle part of the frame. That's how it should look like. And there's the actual one. Oh, that one. And there's that one. As we can see, mm, it's a little bit funny because based on this image, uh, the brake lever should be on the left side. But on my frame, it's on the right side. Now I'm wondering whether it's on the wrong side. Is that something I should be wondering? Normally when you have like rear brake, it's on the right side. Left side is for the gear shifting. I'm also having the hole in the right side for the brake lever. So we go with the right side. I'm not sure whether that's correct, but maybe the reference image I'm refer referring to has like some sort of misinformation or something. My actual reference photo has it on the right side. Super cool. 
crust. Grind it off there. Alright, so I'm going, gonna use the 80 grit sanding disc to smoothen that up. Correct kind of piece for that one. should have it here. The time to do some welding then. Thing already. It's lower the average. burning the sheet metal. How should I be doing that? It's pretty difficult to do. Alright, I ran out of the batteries on the welding mask, but I think those ugly tags will hold this for now. Now I'm going to try to bend it gently. Let's see what happens. Welding session ended up with some headache because of uh, I ran out of batteries on my welding mask, but that was easy fix. That sorted out now. But the other reason for the headache was the lack of ventilation inside the garage. I'm having the gravity-based ventilation in the garage, so there's one hole behind you, and there's also one hole down on the door and some vents to cover those out and it will circulate the air. Uh, but of course when I was welding I was generating lots of fumes from the weld. The air circulation is just not enough to suck those out of course. When I was insulating the garage I built the cables for the electric ventilation system and it's on there, but there is no fan behind the cable just yet because I ran out of time and all the other great excuses. 
But now when I'm needing the ventilation, I should figure out how to proceed. So some of you might have seen the camper van uh, series where I have been building the camper van with my wife. You can of course check it out from the same channel if you haven't seen that one. But uh, I did create this ventilation on the back door of the camper van with these kind of custom made 3D printed adapters. And we were using these kind of computer fans. So the plan is actually to have the fan mounted into the nozzle, like this. Then we will have this aluminium tubing, like this. To power the fan, I dug into my electric stash and found this adapter for some old computer switch. And let's also install the switch to control whenever it's on or off. This goes here, power goes there, there is actually, there is it going. Great! Until I have the another nozzle printed out for the fume extractor, I will use it as I initially planned to do. So it's now connected to the door and we will be having the fumes sucked in there. So I can now continue the welding while the 3D printer is in work. So I'm gonna add some tags here also to prevent it from twisting to other side. Let's go through the welds. <laughs> I'm not proud of them. Actually, why everyone is always like trying to explain their welding. I guess welding is pretty personal stuff and people are on the edge with the topic, so to speak. But I'm not so much in the edge of the topic because I know that I'm not that great welder. What's that one? Not sure if it's if it was better than it's now. This one is this kind of thingy. Uh, and as we got along with the process, this one is actually pretty okay. There was only the dint, so I just put more material in there. And then there was the upper hole. It was the last one and I think it is also the best one. I need to grind it off and see what happens. But here is the cradle. So I tried to do the fix also for the small hole here. It's a it's little bit smaller hole there. But the other edge, this one went completely crazy. I didn't have anything to support the <laughs> droplets. So they just fell down. So that needs to be redone. Uh, here is the 
first weld like the previous attempt that's welded there now and the, here is the uh, rest of the tags so this will hold I'm sure this was pretty nice and it's super easy places to also do those yep so grinding it is uh, the fume extractor by the way works pretty nice I feel that there is something <coughs> in the air but it's it's not even close as bad as it was earlier so I guess it made its purpose This is how it looks after the grind Alright, starts to look like a frame a bit. Here's the swing arm, it's connected with the suspension system up here. And everything seems to fit nice. Um, I'm fairly sure I can now continue with the paint and put this back together whenever it's painted. Now I'm wondering whether I should powder coat this swing arm to be chrome because I have that kind of paint. Unfortunately the powder coating system is not large enough to handle uh, like the mainframe. But let's continue. So about painting the swing arm, uh, I've been battling with two different solutions. One with the normal epoxy and then the grey or now when I have the powder coating system and I also have metallic grey color I could also do the powder coating which would be like more more durable version of the paint and I'm also going to use the same color for the wheels but should I actually first try if the wheels fit inside the powder coating oven 32 and half centimeters. Ah, uh, it will actually fit in there just perfectly. We can paint both of the wheels at the same time. It's so roomy. Great, so we are able to have sturdy paint also for the wheels. That's perfect.
Um, I'm not super happy with the result. Uh, like, there we have this crap over my crappy welds, but of course it's not magic oven. It doesn't fix everything you ruin. So there is the other one too. Uh, but that's fine. I'm probably more concerned about the color since it's, it seems a bit too light for my eye. But it might turn out to be different. I might also go on at chrome at the top of that. I'll let it cool down and we will see the final result. I want to show you something new. It's the roller curtain paint boot system. <laughs> Uh, so I went to local furniture store, they got this sale on the roller, roller curtains and I thought that why wouldn't I build the boot out of those. Let me show you how it works. This is also me testing the new microphone setup, so I bought myself another Christmas present. It's this wireless mic thingy. You have one there and I have one here, so you should be hearing me better than normal. Uh, so here are the curtains, the pullers are also up here, so I go here, do this. Then I go with the other one, okay. and they are all around here, so let me pull them down and give you a quick tour. So here we are. I'm standing at the front of the door and there's the garage in painting mode. So we have five different curtains here and the door is left intact basically. Hmm, actually the clothes will go painted, but that's okay. I got my dirty clothes here anyways. Now uh, I left a bigger gap there to get the ventilation coming in at the top of the table. So I guess it might suck most of the stuff out and the rest of them paint will probably settle on the curtains. But of course there, there are gaps between the curtains. So some, some stuff will be flying out from the boot. Uh, but I guess we will see how it goes. I googled about the painting at the top of the powder coating, so I'm not satisfied with the color the swing arm came out from the oven, so I checked that it's okay to use uh, epoxy primer at the top of the powder coating. It shouldn't bubble out or make it boil, so let's see what happens. All right, now there is the part I want to prime coat hanging from the ceiling. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see the painting process because I want to spare my camera. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Yeah, I got the parts pretty nicely painted. There was some difficult parts like in this mainframe, the small cavities and things like that. It's pretty difficult to get into those with the paint gun. Uh, I'm actually... I'm trying to breathe here uh, through the mask, not to infa in inflate all the ugly vapors. But yeah, it went well. Uh, it's a little bit messy around the garage. Let's see tomorrow what, what it brings. So hopefully everything behind the curtains are pretty much intact. There is some debris here. Like in this. A little bit of paint over here, but... It's barely intact. So that's as much as I will show you about the painting because it's fairly difficult to film here. So next time you will see these parts black, but not that one because it's gonna be gray. 
Uh, all right, so I was in a process of reassembling the frame to conclude this episode, like put it back together, like mock it up, and uh, <laughs> the swing arm. Let's see. I wasn't satisfied with the patches I created for the swing arm, so I cut them off. And I will continue working on the swing arm patches. I would, I, I need to weld them better. I have to say those were super ugly, and uh, one even had a hole in it. So let's do it properly. And and now it's probably the best time to do stuff properly. Whenever this gets on the scooter, I'm not gonna take it off. Uh, so I don't want anything to bother me. Yep. So I will continue with the swing arm probably on the next episode. Uh, I also created these new pushings. So uh, all the pushings out from the swing arm was completely rock hard and needed to be recreated. So I can show you a small teaser. It's actually there inside this weird mold. So you you're better watch the next episode. So this will conclude this episode. I probably create part two about the frame where I can uh, reassemble the frame with the uh, parts I have done. So in that episode I'm probably going to fix this again. Also determine the correct color for this because this is not the correct one. So thanks for joining me and see you on the next one.